Here, have some soup. So you've been to the house. You must have seen my son upstairs. He didn't uh, do anything bad to you, did he? Mm. Good. You see, I forced my own ambitions on him when he was just a little boy and wanted to play with his friends. I made him practice the piano every day, every day. Locked him in the cellar and forced him to play from morning till night. And finally, I brought him here to the middle of nowhere so he would have nothing but his piano. But as if that weren't enough, I gave him a drug called Linda. I wanted to give his fingers, his hearing, an extra touch of power. But it was the devil's medicine that I gave him. It put him on edge and brought out the worst in him. I saw it myself one day. I saw him in the barn playing. He was cutting rabbits and birds to pieces and laughing. He saw me, then approached me. Mom, he said, and he was holding a burning log in his hand. Mom! I can play the piano really well, he said. I can play really well, Mom. Are you happy now? Then I couldn't believe it. He shoved that burning log right into my face and burned me. And this is what happened. <gasps> oh, the agony. And only then did I realize for the first time what he had been through. What I had done to him. His pain. Oh God, what am I going to do now? I don't know. All right, another character that opens up way too easily to Laura. For some reason, Laura just has this thing about her that makes people just tell her their deepest secrets. We just met her a few minutes ago, and she's already telling us about the traumatic experience with her son that left her disfigured and how she abused him and mistreated him as he was growing up. Now, we can also uh, go in for another... Could I interest you in some more soup? Go in for another round of soup. Hmm. Good, isn't it? I don't know what that little look there from Martha was about. But yeah, we can do that anytime. I think that restores your health. Not actually sure, honestly. Doesn't really matter because we don't actually need it, and we won't have access to this infinite soup uh, forever. Where did she get the ingredients for this soup, though? She lives out in the middle of nowhere. Hey, you like that? So you have to go to the priest's house, but I didn't want to walk there, so we teleported. Yeah, that's that would be a nice thing to actually be able to do in the game, but that was through the magic of video editing. Anything new for us, Father? Welcome back. I thought you might return. If you truly are the child of destiny, there is something I must tell you. No man is truly evil or truly good. There is only the power of evil and the power of good, and all depends on how that power is applied. I know not whether you are the destined one, but I have told you what I needed to. Perhaps the human race has gone too far. It seems that my task in life is done. I shall wait here for the last candle to burn out.
It is certainly as foretold. If you are indeed the child of destiny, my old heart is filled with joy. After all, I have lived so long just for this very moment. You know, I did a search for uh, William Knife. Unfortunately, I couldn't find anything on him, so I guess he's not real. I guess I shouldn't be surprised, but honestly, I'm a little bit disappointed that Kenji Ino didn't look up a real kook to get an end-of-the-world prophecy uh, around the late 90s. So now, we have to go back to the musician's house. How are we going to get there? Like that. Maybe we shouldn't have left Janny here, now knowing that the musician is kind of a psychopath. Maybe that was not a good idea. Danny's disappeared again. When I wasn't looking. Where could she have gone? I'll go look for her. Okay. A oh, man upstairs is gone too. I, I don't know what's going on here. Unless... What a pretty butterfly. What's it doing in a place like this? I have to go. Huh, why did Janny run off again? Doesn't seem like she would have a reason to do that. There was a butterfly on Kimberly's back? Well, I mean, there's a room that has a, but that has a lot of butterflies in it, a lot of dead butterflies. Maybe we should check out the uh, musician's secret room, see if anything's different in there. But yeah, Janny's not looking for her grandfather anymore, so why would she run away? Uh, maybe the musician came back and scared her. Could be. Well, it doesn't look like there's anything different in this part. I guess let's go into the secret room. Check out these butterflies again. What the hell happened here? You better not hang around. Come on, let's go back downstairs. You all right? I wonder where Janny went. I ran into Kimberly on the way back and she told me she took the snowmobile. You know, I think I have a better idea of what she's like after talking to her. Oh yeah, I found a stone bridge just north of here. The thing is, the gate is locked and will stay that way unless we can blow it with dynamite or something. It's really too bad. There's a large building in a mountain on the other side of the bridge. There's a weird red glow coming from the summit. I think there's something like an antenna up there. You can bet on it. It could be the source of the signal my team was tracking.
Well, Parker's found the stone bridge and has established that there's no way of opening it beyond blowing it to pieces. He's also noticed Death Mountain and thinks there might be an antenna up there. But I think it's probably something more diabolical. I wish I could do something for Kimberly, you know? But she avoids me like the plague. Parker also is a little bit too preoccupied with Kimberly. You know, someone with that much baggage, I think you just gotta you know, let them go on their way. Don't get involved, that's just gonna end badly. But what happened to the musician? That certainly did not seem like a natural death. Hmm. I think we should go pay the, the priest another visit. See if he has any idea. Yep, here we are. Well, I guess Blindy Claw isn't going to tell us anything more because now he's dead too. Laura, of course, experienced in taking things out of the hands of corpses, so that was no big deal. But what's happening here, do you think? Anyway, now with uh, Blindy Claw dead, we can go into the back of the church and see what he's got back here. He, uh, there's a couple of locked cabinets with which we can use that key he was holding in his hand. So what does a priest out in the middle of the Canadian wilderness keep in his ruined church? A time bomb! Let's take it. Yes, high explosives. That's what a priest keeps in his ruined church in the middle of the Canadian wilderness. I guess I shouldn't really be surprised uh, at the gun, considering uh, what we've seen before. Maybe a little bit more understandable to uh, have the gun since you're living out in the middle of nowhere. Okay, so the first one thing we picked up, yeah, time bomb. That's what he was keeping in his church. And the final weapon. Pick it. The handgun, yes. So this weapon differs from other weapons in that you don't actually aim with it. It automatically aims. The upside is that you don't have to fiddle with the controls to actually uh, hit any enemies. The downside is that you can't actually aim at an enemy's weak point. So, I mean, that can be good or it can be bad. It's bad in that... If you're trying to shoot the weak point like those eyes on the various monsters, you can't do it. You can't aim with the thing. But it's good in that you can just aim, you can just hold the gun up, you'll automatically aim and just keep firing and enemies will die. Fools will be capped and they will drop all around you. Because th those bullets are pretty powerful, honestly. It's one of the more powerful weapons. Oddly, you'd think a submachine gun might be more powerful, but you would be wrong. 